Hi guys, we know you love our truck tour videos. So today we're gonna give you a tour of our new Land 650 slide and truck camper that we just moved into. This is Magellan. And this is Greyhound. Where we make videos about epic road trips, kayaking, hiking, and other outdoor adventures. So the first time that we got into one of these things was actually in a campground on our Great Smokies road trip, which you guys have probably seen the video of. <laughs> Stop it. And we could not believe how big this thing was. I actually ran in and out of the camper a couple times to completely confirm that all of this was indeed in the back of somebody's pickup truck. We jokingly referred to our truck bed camping setup as the Hotel Rambo, but this setup is definitely closer to a hotel. So aside from being able to take our dog Zeus with us on our epic road trips now, one of the biggest reasons we got this camper was because it had a bathroom and a shower. It takes up one parking spot. It doesn't have to be towed and we can load it and unload it off of our pickup truck in about 15 minutes flat. So let's start with the inside. The entry door has a detachable screen door with a slider to pass through items, a lock and a deadbolt, plus a pull down shade. Below the door is a mixture of switches for both indoors and outdoors. We also keep a rug right at the entrance, which has really helped keep the dirt level down and works as a great bath mat. On the wall beside the door, we use these hooks for stuff like keys, headlamps, Zeus's dog leash, hats, anything you want to hang. And this is an old school battery cloth. On this side, we have a fire extinguisher. And up here we have hooks for jackets and hoodies. And this is a mirror on the bathroom door. So next up, the bathroom. So after many years of boondocking and remote camping and campgrounds with no showers, this was definitely the number one reason why we wanted this camper. So this bathroom is a wet bath, meaning everything in the shower can get wet, including the toilet, the sink, the shower. Basically, the entire room is a shower stall. The shower curtain keeps the door mostly dry and the toilet paper cover keeps the toilet paper dry. So the shower head right here is connected to the sink and this is where you control the temperature. There's also a switch on the head of the shower, which will help you conserve water. So below the sink, there's a utility panel. And this is where you access the plumbing, most importantly, the bypass valve for winterizing your camper. The bathroom also has a small mirrored medicine cabinet and a elevated skylight up top, which also gives some more headroom. So behind the toilet, we have a towel rod and a removable clothes rod you can use to hang hangers on. We actually use both of them to hang our bath towels and dish towels and things on to dry out during the day. There's also an exhaust fan up top here in the corner. So no bathroom would be complete without a toilet. So this is a pretty standard RV toilet that has a switch on the other side that flushes with water. So real quick joke about this bathroom when we first got it. Uh, our neighbor is about 6'2", 6'3". Uh, he can actually stand in here. Uh, and has no issue um, and uh, the first thing he said though upon entering the bathroom was well I think it'd be kind of hard to have sex with two women in here you could take a shower you could take a big massive poop but you can't have sex with two women in the bathroom yeah sorry this guys this is it this is a huge upgrade for us over our tailgate and even camp table. This table moves forward and back and even twists. Obviously you can eat here. You can also use this as a laptop area. There are some 110 volt USB and cigarette lighter ports right underneath here as well. We even use this as our main kitchen prep and dish drying area as well. 
And believe it or not, it converts to an additional sleeping area for another person. And although it barely holds a New York pizza box, it does offer prime begging real estate for the Zucinator. The three windows in the camper function the same way, with screens, shades, and fire escape hatches. And we found we can keep them partially open during rainstorms, unlike our truck cap. On the left is a magazine rack that we use instead as a spice and napkin rack. So behind this area is actually some storage, not a ton, but enough to store some useful things. Mainly Zeus's bed and his food and water containers while we're traveling. When we're not traveling, we take his food and water and put it on the floor, and we take his bed out and put it here on these cushions where he sleeps at night. Below this cushion is the DC battery storage area. Above this area, we have a storage cabinet that we use for dry goods such as chips and pastas, sanitizing wipes, and Thanos Infinity Gauntlet bottle opener so that if I'm ever faced with a very, very difficult choice in eliminating half the beers in my fridge, I can use this to erase them through my stomach. Across the top of the dinette is this overhead area, secured by netting. We've been storing our backpacks, hiking packs, and camera bags here. On the other side of the netting area, close to the entry, is another cabinet that we've been using for utility items, such as fire starters, foldable chairs, and toilet cleaning supplies. So the kitchen area, yes. We have a kitchen area. So the kitchen area comes with a big cabinet. And this is where we store our pots, our pans, our bowls, our cups, our plates. And right next to it is our microwave. So below that is a countertop with a two burner propane stove and a sink with a cutting board sink cover. Now, my only gripe with this cutting board is that it can never stay put while we're traveling and we are constantly finding it on the floor when we open the door. So this is what Lance refers to as their spice rack. We actually use it more as our kitchen accessory rack. So we have our wash rag, our dish towel, our soaps, our scrubbers and everything in there. And also the lighter for the propane stove, which for some reason Lance decided not to make a self-igniting stove. Why, I don't know. Even our $100 camp stove is self-igniting. <laughs> so down below we have two drawers here that we use for our utensils. And then on the other side, we have a cabinet here that you can access the hot water heater. And we also store our trash in here too. And there's also a nice window here for ventilation while you're cooking. So you've probably been wondering, where's the refrigerator? In the bedroom, of course. Where else would it be? Okay, we thought it was a little bit weird, but it's not that weird considering how small this camper is and how close this refrigerator is to the kitchen area right here. In trying to make the dinette very large, the Land 650 was inspired by the beloved six pack D650 camper where the fridge was also in the sleeping area. At three cubic feet, and with a freezer that actually works, this is a great thing to have in the camper for beer. Lots and lots and lots and lots of beer. Okay, I staged this. We have food too. That all being said, this is a proper bedroom area. It is a true queen size bed. And there are amenities that you would expect in your house as well, just on a smaller scale. Over here, we have three cubby holes slash shelves. I'm not sure what you call them, but cubes with your clothes and socks and what have you, electric blankets, any, anything you need to put in there. Then there's this closet here, uh, pretty typical closet setup in that there's a rod and put hangers on it with your clothes. We might convert it to some kind of shelving system to make more room for things instead of hanging clothes. Um, we usually folded our clothes in our other setup with our truck. Back here is a large cubby hole. You can use this to store 
some pretty large things. I am hiding. I am hiding. Can she find me? Can she find me? On the opposite side, there is another fire escape style window and a place where you can watch TV. So we didn't buy a TV with this because we don't really watch TV, but they left us the space for it anyway. Is this weird considering that we are making YouTube videos? Let us know in the comments. Despite not having a TV, there's a ton of charging options here, and that's what we made it into. A charging station for our cameras, phones, and drones, and this old reliable oscillating fan. It's also where we sync up the AM FM stereo via Bluetooth to play stuff like Pink Floyd and Steely Dan through the speakers. There's also this privacy curtain that goes across. Lastly, these are the stairs that lead up to the bed. If you were wondering if Zeus would have the confidence to climb up or down from the two areas, yes, he figured it out within two days. So let's talk about the bells and whistles. There is ample lighting in here. Two from the main switch, one in the bathroom, two in the kitchen, two in the sleeping area, and two two-color LED reading lights in the bedroom area as well. The 18,000 BTU furnace is located just below the sink, and the air conditioner is right above it in the ceiling. There are also three fans, one right near the entrance, one above the bed, and one in the bathroom. These do an amazing job of keeping things cool, even in the summer, pulling out cooking odors, shower humidity, and bathroom odors. Right in the kitchen area, there are various control panels, such as for the solar panel and the battery, the awning controls and the lighting, the tankless hot water heater on off switch, the water pump on off switch, the tank level readings for your different tanks, the thermostat for the fans, air conditioning and heat. Right below the steps is a fuse box and one of the two carbon monoxide detectors. The other is in the bedroom area by the shelves. There's also this TV interface connection thingy for the satellite. If you know what this is, please let us know or make fun of us in the comments. Overall, in order to run the 110 outlets, the microwave, or the air conditioning, you need AC power via campground connection, your house, or a generator. Everything else runs on the DC battery we showed you earlier. The hot water heater, the furnace, and the fridge can also run on propane. This is the left side of our camper. Right here is our tankless water heater, which you can have access to if you need to. This is our furnace exhaust. This is our fresh water put in. So our 22 gallon fresh water tank, when we want to fill it up, this is where we go. This is our outdoor shower station. It has both hot and cold water. Ladies everywhere, the purpose of the shower is to wash your man animal before he comes into the camper and brings anything disgusting. Over here we have our electric hookup for our 30 amp. And then over here we have a nice little storage area that conveniently stays up where we store our water hose and when we're done with our electric cable we'll stick it in there. The other thing we keep in here are elbows and clamps and valves for our different city water and black water connections. This is a manual jack that we also store in there. This is in case the electric jacks, which you can see there's one in the back, and one in the front here on the driver's side. In the event that they fail, uh, this is what you gotta use, not fun. Right here is our pressurized water hookup and our black tank flush. On the opposite side, we have a 10 foot power awning with LED lights and outdoor Bluetooth speakers. A really awesome feature on this power awning is that it will retract automatically if the wind gets too heavy. 
So on this side, you can see the front and the rear electric jacks. These four jacks work with wireless remotes to load and unload your camper, and there's also manual jacks that you can use in case of failure. When traveling, this is where your ratchet straps go to tie down your camper to your truck. So right here is access to the camper battery, which you can use to jump yourself, someone else, or just charge something up. Moving on to the rear side of the camper, we have our backup camera, which has been absolutely essential for us since we can't see anything behind us anymore. Uh, it helps with the blind spots as well because the camper is a little bit wider in the lane. In addition to the side awning that we have, we also have a manual awning, which you can do by yourself, but two people definitely, definitely helps. We also have another patio light back here with the controls inside and two docking lights which help for when we're trying to back up at night. The other thing to point out over here is the sewer pipe which is stored here behind the awning arm. This is where our propane tank is stored. Simple latch, five gallon propane tank in there. These are black and gray valves down here. I unlocked this already. Magnetically sticks up. Got the gray valve, got the black valve. Our gray tank holds 15 gallons, black tank holds 16. This is where you put the sewer pipe in, whatever you're at a campground or a dump station, wherever it's right here. Real quick here, we have some outdoor connections. Two 110 outlets to plug in stuff. And cable TV connection right there. Up over here, we have a gutter. And then up over there, we have a gutter on either corner. There's also some in the front for any kind of rain or air conditioning condensation that goes on the top of the camper. You want to have it run off. That's where those are going. Last but not least, this is the entrance door to the camper itself. Inside. Now, normally this is going to be sitting on the back of a truck. You may actually be asking yourself, where are our stairs? Well, we didn't get them. And the reason we can get them is because if you're familiar with our truck tour videos, you would have seen a swing out bike rack. The reason we didn't get stairs is because we want to be able to find a set of stairs to attach to go up into the camper that also fits with our swing out bike rack. In the interim, we have the swing out assist handle to help us get in and we have a little step stool that we use to come in here as well. So that, my friends, is our Land 650 tour. So far, we are absolutely loving it. We watched a ton of tours before we made the leap, so if you are in the same boat, I hope this video helped you out and was able to answer some of your questions. Give this video a like if it helped you at all, and if you have any questions, leave those in the comments. Otherwise, subscribe for more of our epic road trip adventures. And definitely stay tuned because we plan on coming out with some videos where we go over what we like and what we dislike about this camper. So as always, safe travels, and we'll see you on the trails or in the water. And with that, I think I'm done. Shazam. Hi, I have a pillow on my head. There's a switch on the other side that flushes. Why do I have a pillow on my head? Why? I have a... I have a pillow on my head because I'm dumb. She can probably find me, right? What if, what if I did this, and I shut this off, can you see me now, can you see me now, I'm hiding, I'm hiding behind here, oh this is tight, this is very tight, my bones, my body, my muscles. I'm out.